Thank you, Brian. All right. Well, welcome everyone to this October 9, 2023 meeting of the Homewood City Council. Uh, we're going to start tonight with a proclamation for Down Syndrome Awareness Month, so I'll turn it over to the mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. And anybody who, I uh, see we have a large crowd tonight, and I'm pretty sure this is what it's for, not for everything that's going to happen beyond this. If you guys want to come forward for the proclamation, you are more than welcome. Who's the lady right there? That looks like. She looks like the. Um, Excellent. So, Proclamation for Down Syndrome Awareness Month, October 2023. Whereas Down syndrome is the most frequently occurred chromosomal disorder and is the leading cause of intellectual and developmental delay in the United States. And whereas approximately one in every 700 children are born with Down syndrome, representing an estimated 6,000 births per year in the United States, with approximately 85 of those annual births occurring here in Alabama. Whereas possessing a wide range of abilities, people with Down syndrome are active participants in educational, occupational, social, and recreational circles of our communities. And whereas yet despite significant increases in lifespan and intellectual opportunities over the past decade, there is still much work to be done regarding the rights to equality, inclusion, education, medical care, research, employment, and support for people with Down syndrome. And whereas the city of Homewood encourages all citizens to work together to celebrate the lives of individuals with Down syndrome and remember to appreciate and regard every individual with dignity as a valued member of our community. And whereas through public awareness, the city of Homewood supports the initiatives of organizations working to ensure People with Down syndrome have adequate services and are valued by society and can lead fulfilling and productive lives in our community. Now, therefore, I, Patrick McCluskey, Mayor of the City of Homewood, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2023 as Down Syndrome Awareness Month in support of individuals with Down syndrome, as well as their families, advocates, researchers, and medical professionals. I encourage all Homewood citizens to work together to promote respect and inclusion of individuals with Down syndrome and to celebrate their accomplishments and contributions. Excellent. You guys can take a picture. Get in a little bit. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. So with that proclamation done, I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, we're going to start tonight with an invocation from Councillor Sims, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone will please stand. God, today, um, first, we'd just like to say a prayer for peace. And also, we'd like to say a prayer as we recognize today as Indigenous Peoples Day. We take a moment to remember the Native brothers and sisters who are the first peoples of these lands. Creek, Chickasaw, Choctaw, and Cherokee have inhabited Alabama for centuries. These, the Creek, or Muscogee people, originally lived where we are today in Homewood. We'd like to honor them, thank God for them, and pray for them. God, thank you for the Muscogee people. We recognize that it is a good gift that we can come and meet on their lands. Forgive us, those of us who are immigrants to and settlers in this country, so often forgetting that we are guests on the First Nations people of North America. Please help us to live on these lands with respect. We pray for the Muscogee people today. May they have unity in their tribe. May their remaining sacred lands be honored and protected. May you bless their efforts to revitalize their language and culture. May all the Muscogee people know that they are loved by a good and powerful God. 
creator of every tribe, nation, and tongue, may you richly bless the Muscogee people. Amen. Everyone will face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Seacrest, if you will please call roll. Yes, sir. Councilor Walton. Here. 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 Alamo. Here. Wolverton. Here. Sims. Here. Jones. Here. Smith. Jones. Here. Andrews. Here. Harden. Here. President White. Here. All right, so we've got 10 present tonight. Um, next on the agenda is the reading of the minutes from our council meeting of September 25, 2023. Those have previously been distributed. I would entertain a motion and a second to dismiss motion. the reading of said minutes and for approval of the same. We have a motion from Mr. Wolverton. Second. Second from Mr. Alamon. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those are approved 10 to 0. Next we have board vacancies. Uh, we had a Ward 4 his Historic Preservation Commission uh, position closed today without any applicants, so we will reopen that one uh, to November 27 at 4.30. Uh, we also need to open a Ward 5 library um, position. We've got a term expiring uh, with, I think, an incumbent that probably, that I, I understand, wants to reapply. So we will open that one until October 23rd at 4.30 p.m. All right, we have one addition to the agenda tonight. It's an addition to old business agenda. It's an item that's already been in, uh, in committee. It's 020823 bid opening held on October 2nd for revised paving project. Um, and we'll add that to old business. So with that one addition, I would entertain a motion and a second for approval of the amended agenda. So, so moved. moved. Right. Second. All right, we have a motion from Mr. Alamon, second from Ms. Nelms. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is approved 10 to 0. There's no, nothing on the consent agenda tonight, so we'll start with old business and that added item. 020823, bid opening held on October 2nd for a revised paving project, and we'll start with a report from finance. Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, finance committee met October the 2nd. And uh, the, the initial report uh, was to carry this over, but I would like to, to make a motion from the floor. Uh, there were no bids received, so uh, uh, the action that I feel like we should have taken at that point was to uh, reset, uh, have another bid opening date for October 30th at 431 uh, with bids uh, being required uh, the, as a deadline of October 30th at 4.30. So I'd like to make that motion from the floor. All right. Second. All right, so we have a motion from Mr. Jones, a second from Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is 10 to zero, and we will reset that bid opening. All right, next item, 110923, request to surplus various municipal items brought to us by Gordon Janes. Uh, and another report from finance, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, Finance Committee met, voted 4 to 0 to recommend approval of uh, this ordinance. All right, uh, Mr. Kendrick, can you give us a first reading? Yes, sir. It's an ordinance to declare certain property as surplus, hereby establish and declare that the following described personal property of the city of Homewood is no longer needed for public or municipal purposes, and therefore declared surplus property. The property is a 2010 Crown Victoria, one used air compressor, one electric main lift. Uh, approximately 92 black fence panels and approximately 150 seven foot fence post. Section two, that the mayor and clerk is authorized and directed to dispose of the property by auction to the highest bidder. All right, thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Uh, any questions or comments from council? If not, then I'd entertain a motion and a second for unanimous consent. So moved. Second. Motion from Mr. Hardin, second from Ms. Nelms, and a roll call vote, please, Mr. Seacrest. Walton. Yes, sir. Here. Yes. Alamont. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Sam. Yes. Jones. Yes. Smith. Now. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Harden. Yes. President White. Yes. So that is 10 to 0. Now entertain a motion and a second for approval. So moved. Second. Motion from Mr. Gwaltney. Second from Ms. Gear. And another roll call vote, please, Mr. Seekers. Yes, sir. Councilor Gwaltney. Yes, sir. Here. Yes. Alamont. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Sam. Yes. Jones? Yes. Smith? 
Snell. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Harden. Here. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So that passes 10 to 0 and will be ordinance 2876. Next item, 120923, request to add, add amendment to Cahaba Solid Waste Contract to allow for fuel rebate, brought to us by Berkeley Squires and J.J. Bischoff. And we'll have another report from Finance, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, Finance Committee met, voted 4-0 to zero to recommend approval. All right, so we have a motion from Finance. Any questions or comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that is 10-0 to zero and will be resolution 23-147. Next item, 1408-23, request, to consider, request for consideration of traffic signage at the intersection of Lucerne Boulevard and Parkway Drive, brought to us by Councillor Sims. And we'll start with a report from Public Safety, Mr. Gwaltney. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The committee met and voted 4-0 to zero to recommend approval of the item. The motion was made by Councillor Nelms and seconded by Councillor Hardin. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Kendrick, uh, if you could give us another first reading. Yes, sir, it's an ordinance to further regulate traffic in the city of Homewood and to provide for penalties for the violation thereof, be ordained as follows. Section one, every person operating a motor vehicle traveling on or along the northbound lane of Parkway Drive on the easterly side of the traffic <coughs> island located at the intersection of Parkway Drive and Lucerne Boulevard identified in Exhibit one is should cause a motor vehicle to yield to traffic traveling on or along Lucerne Boulevard. Section two, to every person operating a motor vehicle traveling along the southbound lane of Parkway Drive on the east side of the traffic island located at the intersection of Parkway Drive and Lisbon and Boulevard, as identified in Exhibit 1, shall cause a motor vehicle to yield to traffic traveling on along Parkway Drive. Section 3, that person operating a motor vehicle traveling on along the north main, northbound lane of Parkway Drive <coughs> on the westerly side of the traffic island, as identified in Exhibit 1, shall cause a motor vehicle to yield to traffic traveling on or along Lisbon Boulevard. Section 4, no person firm or corporation shall park within 30 feet of the intersect of the yield sign located on Parkwood Drive as identified in Exhibit 1. Section 2, no person shall park within 30 feet of the yield sign located on Parkway Drive as identified in Exhibit 1. Section 6, no person shall park within 30 feet of the yield sign located on Parkwood Parkway Drive as identified in Exhibit 1. Section 7, the violation of any section of this ordinance shall constitute a misdemeanor and be punished is provided in section 1-8 of the code of ordinances section 8 that the chief of police or his designee shall erect or cause to be erected appropriate markings yield signs at the intersections and places described in section 1 through 6 and in exhibit 1 of the ordinance section 9 this ordinance shall become effective immediately upon its adoption by the city council approved by the mayor is otherwise becoming law all right thank you any questions or comments from council if not, then I entertain a motion and a second for unanimous consent. So moved. A motion for Mr. Alamon, second for Mr. Sims, and a roll call vote, please, Mr. Seacrest. Councilor Walden. Yes, sir. Gear. Yes. Alamon. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Sims. Yes. Jones. Yes. Yes. Smith. Nelms. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Harden. Yes. President White. Yes. All right, so that's 10 to 0. And now entertain a motion and a second for approval. So moved. Second. Motion from Mr. Gwaltney. Second. For Ms. Nelms, second for Ms. Nelms, and another roll call vote, please. Councilor Walden. Yes, sir. Gear. Yes. Alamon. Yes. Overton. Yes. Sims. Yes. Jones. Yes. Nelms. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Harden. Yes. President White. Yes. So that is ten to zero, and will be ordinance twenty-eight seventy-seven. <laughs> Next item, o seven o nine twenty-three, public hearing set for tonight for consideration of sign variances at 160 State Farm Parkway, brought to us by the Drury Inn and uh, Wyatt Pugh. And we'll start with a report from Special Issues, which I believe Ms. Andrus is reporting out. Yes, let's see my array of minutes up here. Um, let's see, we met last week, Special Issues we met last week, and we voted five to zero to refer this item to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing. The motion was made by Councilor Sims and seconded by myself. All right. Thank you very much. So I will go ahead and open the public hearing. You see Mr. Smith uh, is at the podium. Filling in for Mr. Pugh. Uh, there are three, three variants request for this sign. The first one is on the marquee. It's considered a marquee sign. Um, permitting lettering 36 inches tall, the ordinance limits the height to 24 inches, 24 inches in the Wildwood Center District. So this is what the marquee sign looks like on the, on the storefront. Um, and it, it meets the total signage square footage. 
All right. So that's just a height variance? That is the first variance, yes, for the, the lettering height. Okay. And then what's the The other next two, one? Uh, Brian, the, the, these have to do with the, to permit a wall sign, these are, this is considered a wall sign uh, in a location other than the storefront, which is variance number three. So this is on the side of the building. And then also to allow for that sign to be up to four feet, six inches tall. Okay. Because the maximum limit is three feet. So we've got a placement and a, and and a height. two height variants. That's right. All right. Okay. Is there anyone else here tonight to speak for or against this item? Come on up. And if you will, just sign in up at the podium. Good evening. My name is Graham Roop. I'm with Drury Development Corporation out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we own the 138 room Drury Inn and Suites. Uh, we are currently, well, I shouldn't say currently, actually upcoming starting next week, we will begin an interior and exterior renovation, uh, which, which will be a significant reinvestment into the property. And uh, along with that, we are intending on updating our sign package to our new logo. Um, and would uh, appreciate uh, if you guys could uh, approve these three variances so we can get on our way. All Thank right. you very much. Thank you. And I'm here for questions as well. I'm going to ask for questions just a second. Let me see if, is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? If not, then I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and ask if there are any questions or comments from council. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the change is like y'all did it like a new branding for the logo? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that changed the size, like for all of them? It or? was, um, so most people would typically say that they can't even tell that there's a difference. Like mm -hmm. if you ask my mom, she would, she would have no idea. But um, it, it is a little bit different. It's a little bit more vertical. Um, the D we've increased to where if you look at the RURY, it will be a little bit smaller. So in the variance where we're getting the size for a four foot six, that's going to be Just the only two. let. Yes, ma'am. Oh, exactly. Okay. So everything else will be significantly okay. smaller. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Motion approved. Second. All right. So we have a motion from Mr. Almon. <laughs> second from Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that is approved 10 to 0, and will be resolution 23 148. All right. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Much. Appreciate it. All right. Next item, 150923, request to set a public hearing for consideration of a sign variance at 2713 18th Place South, brought to us by Dunn Real Estate uh, and David Brandt of Favorite and Wyatt Pugh. Uh, we will set that public hearing. Mr. Kennedy, just make sure I'm okay. I can set that for uh, our next meeting, correct? Yes. On the 23rd? Yes. So we'll set that for October 23rd at 6 p.m. All right, next item, request to set a public hearing for consideration of a sign variance at 169 State Farm Parkway, Suite 101, brought to us by Stanton Optical, RME Signs Pro, LLC, and Wyatt Pugh. We will also set that public hearing for, the, for October 23rd at 6 p.m. All right, uh, I'm going to take uh, the next two items. I'm going to, we're going to do them out of order. Um, so we'll start with uh, 090923. Public hearing set for tonight for consideration to rezone 85 Bagby Drive from C1 to MXD. Uh, the applicant is John Chapman uh, and 85 uh, Capital Partners LLC to facilitate, facilitate an expansion of the adjacent Magic City Acceptance Academy through the rehabilitation of an existing office building to accommodate additional educational activities and teaching space, as well as office space for various mental health and life services organizations. Uh, this comes to us with from the Planning Commission with a vote of 7-1 to 1 uh, favorable recommendation. Uh, we will start with a report. This comes from Planning and Development, correct? Yeah, so we'll start with a report from Planning and Development. All right. The committee voted 5-0 to zero to refer this item to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing. The motion was made by Councilor Sims and seconded by Councilor Nelms. All right. Uh, so with that, I will go ahead and open the public hearing. 
Um, I'm not sure who wants to start for the group, but feel free to come on up. Uh, Randall Miner, uh, 130 Stratford Circle, uh, representing uh, the property owner. Uh, there's two applications here as uh, John Chapman, the principal of the, uh, the property owners for both of those uh, applications, uh, will um, explain. Uh, we've requested that they go out of order just because I think it will make more sense. And we're going to give a, a brief presentation uh, for this one and then um, obviously answer questions. And then there'll be a separate uh, presentation that we'll do uh, for the, the other item. Thanks. All right. Mr. Chapman. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, John Chapman with Ferris Properties, um, 2400 Arlington Avenue, 35205 here in Birmingham. Um, as I mentioned, we're a Birmingham-based company. We're a diversified real estate firm. We operate currently in the states of Alabama and Mississippi. Um, if you look at the <coughs> projects we're involved with, primarily we're a multifamily shop, so we do a lot of apartments um, as far as a percentage of our total portfolio. Additionally, we do some commercial projects, and more recently, within the past five or six years, we've become involved um, in the community impact space. And that's been a very rewarding space for us. Um, a local kind of noteworthy project that operates in that world would have been our redevelopment of the old Dewberry Engraving Building down on Fifth Avenue South in Birmingham that's now home to the 1917 clinic that's operated as a specialty clinic of UAB. Um, World-renowned, fantastic group. It's been a great experience for us. And that's really what's led to us being before you a few years ago um, in asking for our rezoning of a formerly C1 property on Bagby Drive, uh, 75 Bagby Drive, to mixed use that's now home to the Magic City Acceptance Academy. Um, so it's when those community impact pieces and the multifamily impact pieces collide is very exciting. And so one of the projects we'll speak to you tonight is on that front. Um, again, we've referenced there'll be two projects. I understand we're now before you for the 85 Bagby piece. Um, I just want to do my setup for both, and then we'll get specifics on those. Um, the two projects are similar schedules, similar locations, um, but they are very different applications, uh, although they do overlap. Both of the projects are intended to provide uplift and support for persons who are marginally marginalized in our community and folks who can benefit greatly from a supportive environment and from an ecosystem that we're hoping to create on Bagby, or, or really continue, I should say. These people, um, these persons in the communities we're gonna speak to are both local to us, um, and I think it was great to see the proclamation this evening. I think that was a great setup. Um, but they're also from other surrounding counties, regions, and beyond, and, and Karen can speak to that when she's at the podium later this evening. Um, as I spoke at the Planning Commission, and really to anyone who will listen to me as it relates to Bagby Drive and our experience on Bagby Drive, I think it's of utmost importance that I say publicly again, we would not be here uh, this evening if it were not for the redevelopment of the Homewood Police Department, the Public Safety Center, and it's that vision and that forward thinkingness on the city's behalf that really, uh, you know, um, solidifies our belief in the location um, although this property and these projects we'll speak tonight have been blighted for lots of years, it's a fantastic pocket. And again, without the city's vision on that front, I don't think we would be here. Um, relative to our development team, we're very fortunate to have put together a fantastic team, all of which are local participants, and I think they're known commodities to the city. Um, CCR Architecture is working with us for our 85 Bagby Project, KPS Group is working with us for our 5565 Bag Bagby project. Brassville and Gorey has been our um, construction partner of choice uh, as we developed the first Magic City Acceptance Academy at 75 Bagby Drive, and we tend to use those folks again. Dave Irich is our landscape architect of record on the projects, and Shoal Engineering is, record, uh, I'm sorry, is our civil engineer of record for both projects. Um, specific to the 85 Bagby piece that, again, we're speaking to you now, um, this is an expansion of 75 Bagby, which formerly was a blighted um, office structure in very similar physical condition to all of the buildings we'll speak to tonight. 
uh, what we're seeking related to our rezoning of mixed use is for the school's expansion. Um, we've got an illustration here on screen tonight. I'm going to ask Scott Burnett with CCR Architects to come and speak to the physical redevelopment plan for the building. And then I'll ask Karen Musgrove to come speak to us on behalf of the school operation itself. I'm Scott Burnett with CCR Architecture and Interiors, and the image I was going to talk to went away. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. We don't talk very well without pictures of buildings. It's impossible for us. Um, so in the, in the image you see on screen, the, the top building is the existing Magic City Acceptance Academy, just to get you oriented. And then the building further down the hill uh, is, is 85 Bagby Drive. And so we realized that there was a way to connect the pedestrian, the, the students, between the original building and the, and the new building by creating a covered crosswalk and then a bridge that elevates you above the parking lot and, and takes those kids straight into the second floor of 85 Bagby Drive. So that, that walk gives those students access to the top two floors of the building and, and leaves the lower floor available for mixed use, uh, which, is, which is the plan and the reason for that zoning um, is to allow for the lowest floor to, to be office space. Hello again, Karen Musgrove. I'm the CEO of the Magic City Acceptance Academy. So just to kind of give you all a heads up on a, or an update on where we are, we are uh, firmly settled into year three. We have uh, 347 kids at the school, sixth through 12th grade. 61%, um, 60% are, um, are at or at free um, reduced lunch. Around 32% are Latina or Latinx. And so um, they're doing great and they're thriving. And so our goal is to expand into this new space and that will put us at around 550 to 600 kids, still six through 12. We might go to fifth grade, but not really sure yet. Um, and our goal into this space is to add um, a band room, because right now we don't really have a really good band room, and also a theater black box space, and then additional classrooms, and then more specifically, um, mental health space. So we'll, we will be able to do uh, more mental health opportunities with the kids, and then also to the surrounding um, area that could be family counseling, individual counseling, or uh, uh, telecounseling and telehealth as well. So it's just an expansion of what we're doing at the school. Um, so All right, thank, thank you. you very much. All right. Anybody else that's here to speak for or against this item? If not, then I'll go ahead and <coughs> close the public hearing, ask if there are any questions or comments from council. I would like to just highlight um, what I said at the Planning Commission, which is, and also to highlight what John pointed out about the redevelopment in West Homewood, um, that these were originally four very unloved buildings that were, uh, two of which were we were about to condemn this summer. And the fact that we've able, to, we have, we the city, you, the, the school, the academy, has been able to breathe life into that campus, create something that was not there at all before, and um, grow and thrive in that space um, is just a wonderful success story. And it's everything that, that any city should ask for. So those are my comments. All right. Um, Mr. Kendrick, if you'd give us a first reading, please. Yes, sir. It's an ordinance to further regulate and amend. Ordinance 1602 entitled the Zoning Ordinance and the Zoning Map of the City of Homewood. Whereas the Planning Commission has favorably recommended that the property described herein be rezoned from its current zoning classification C1 Office Building District to the City's MXD Mixed Use District. Whereas the City Council has set the public hearing to be October the 9th, 2023 at 6 o'clock p.m. Now therefore be ordained by the City Council as follows, that the following described property described in Exhibit A, which is the legal description, known as 85 Bagby Drive, parcel ID 20014200407, is hereby <clears throat> rezoned from the city's current zoning classification C1 to the MX, 
D zoning district pursuant to a development plan attached to exhibit B. Section two, that from and after the act of this ordinance by the city council and approved by the mayor, that the restrictions are applicable to MXD zoning district as set out in this ordinance and ordinance 1602, previously adopted by the city, the final development plan attaches to exhibit B and a proffer made by the applicant that the permitted uses of the property shall be limited to facilitate an expansion of the adjacent Magic City Acceptance Academy through the rehabilitation of existing office building to accommodate additional educational activities and teaching spaces as well as an office space for various mental health and life services organizations shall control the uses made of and permitted on the property described in section one. Section three, the October the 9th at six o'clock plan is a time and place for the public hearing. Section four, the city clerk has given notice as required by law. Section five, any part of provision order declared to be unconstitutional by a court of competent jurisdiction, all the parts remain in full force and effect. Section six, as the ordinance shall become effective immediately upon its passage by the city council approval of the mayor as otherwise becoming law. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Kendrick. All right. Uh, if there are no other questions or comments, I'd entertain a motion and a second for unanimous consent. Second. All right, motion by Mr. Alamon, second by Ms. Andrus, and a roll call vote, vote please, Mr. Seacrest. Councilor Walden. Yes, sir. Gear. Yes. Alamon. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Sims. Yes. Jones. Yes. Now. Yes. Andrus. Yes. Harden. Yes. President White. Yes. So that is. Yes. Uh, y yes, sir. That, that's exactly what we proffered. Thank you. All right. Second. All right. So we have a motion from Mr. Alamon and a second from Ms. Andrus. And another roll call vote, please, Mr. Seacrest. Councilor Walden. Yes, sir. Gear. Yes. Alamon. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Sims. Yes. Jones. Yes. Nails. Yes. Andrus. Yes. Harden. Abstain. President. President White. Yes. So that is nine to zero to one, and is, that is an approval, and will be ordinance 2878. All right, so with that, we will go back one item uh, to 080923, public hearing set for tonight for consideration to rezone 55 Bagby Drive and 65 Bagby Drive from C5 to MXD. Applicant is also John Chapman uh, and Capital Partners. Um, and we'll start with another report from Planning and Development, Ms. Andrus. Yes, the committee voted four to zero to refer this item to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing. The motion was made by Councilor Sims and seconded by Councilor Wolverton. All right, so I will go ahead and open the public hearing on this item. Uh, Mr. Miner, are you starting off again? Uh, yes, sir. All right, um, Randall Miner again, uh, 130 Stratford Circle, uh, representing the applicant for this property. Um, and I'm gonna let them talk first, but I'll kind of do a, a kind of recap at the end uh, with okay. some language that we proffered to the city. Perfect. All right. Now speaking specifically to the 5565 Bagby um, mixed use zoning request, um, the, as Jennifer alluded to earlier, um, the buildings in question here, um, you know, their fate has long been, I guess, questioned and, um, you know, uh, they, the, the images kind of speak for themselves. Um, the structures have been abandoned, as best we can tell, for at least 15 years, probably longer. Um, Bell South, I think, was the last occupant in the structures. Um, you know, since we became involved with 75 Bagby, um, we were before the council, I believe, at the end of 2020, the beginning of 2021. Um, you know, we've had our eyes on the full Bagby and, and what to do with it, candidly because we want to support the school. We want the, the ecosystem and that environment that, that surrounds the school to be positive and uplifting and, and, and be an absolute blessing to the folks who are there um, day in and day out. And so we've, we've searched long and hard to, to figure something out. Um, the idea of these structures being placed back in service as offices um, it is just not going to occur. I mean, candidly, that would be the most economically viable solution for things if that were to be the case, but that, that ship has sailed. And so um, we've pivoted and we think we've 
pulled together a plan that speaks to needs of a community that certainly it certainly exists within our own community and region, but, but much larger as well. And so our plan and the reason for being before the council tonight is for the structures to be redeveloped into a mixed use facility that would um, be residential primarily in nature, but also has some other multiple um, multi uses that we're going to speak to. But the residential component of the structures would be specific for those 55 and up and for those persons in our community who are living with an intellectual and developmental disability, so an IDD community. Those two participants would be the folks that we would um, plan to occupy the buildings. Contained within the structures, within the, the residential units, um, we will be constructing a new building at grade level um, that would act as both the entrance to the property as well as house a medical deliverable that would be operated by our operating partner in the Magic City Wellness Center, which is a, an offshoot of Birmingham AIDS Outreach that um, Karen Musgrove will speak to in a moment. And then also our second operating development partner on this would be Triumph Services, who have long operated in our community and are providing great amount of support and uplift for the IDD community that we also are targeting with this redevelopment. So I'm gonna let Beth Zions, who is CEO of Triumph Services, speak to that. First, I'd like to ask Gray Plosser to join me at the podium and let him let walk me, us through the development. Mr. Chapman, let me interrupt mm -hmm. you real quick just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Sure. Just, and, and I know I'm being precise with language, but there, there, there's a reason for it. So I, I just wanna make sure. There aren't any restrict. You, you talked about th there were some groups that were targeted for this, but there's no restrictions with regard to the residential component that, with this project. That's correct. correct. We're, okay. we're before the council tonight, seeking no restrictions. Perfect. Certainly. No, that's the, my poor choice of words. Um, has it look followed it, me all the days of my life. It, one of the first <laughs> I, one of the first things I tell witnesses when I prepare them is lawyers talk different, um, and so we Fair enough, so. no no judgment. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. No, no, okay. I, I, do I didn't mean to interrupt that. you, but I, I do appreciate that because it has been certainly the subject of a lot of discussion. So yeah. thank you. Greg Plosser with KPS. Greg Plosser with KPS Group. Um, and uh, it's our privilege to be working with John on this project, as we have several others previously. Um, the, it's, it's an exciting thing for us. I've been practicing architecture and planning for 50 years and uh, uh, I've come to think that for the most part it's a lot more fun to turn something that has become useless into something useful than it is to start from scratch. It's more challenging and it's more fun for sure but uh, our firm has also done planning for most of its history and had the privilege of being associated with Homewood in its land use plan and the preparation of that land use plan. And it's also fun when, you know, a good plan comes together and, and the things begin to happen that were intended or hoped for in, in that. I think John made the allusion to, to what the city is doing. And as a, as a poor citizen, my, I think one of the most important things that any municipal government can do is to be about facilitating and encouraging redevelopment in their community, reinvestment in their community constantly. And you all know of communities who have failed to do that. So my hat's off to you for what you started back then with that land use plan, for, the, for putting the, the public safety facility out there as an anchor. Uh, those things have made it possible for somebody like John to come forward and come up with an idea to reuse those things in a creative and productive way. Productive in terms of taxes and all sorts of things. Well, so the job, and specifically from a design standpoint, is simply taking a couple of old, rather 
anonymous buildings and turning them into something else. And the truth is, they actually are not too bad for housing. They got long corridors, but, but uh, those two buildings will ultimately accommodate about 170 multifamily units, predominantly single bedroom units. Uh, there'll be a few two bedroom ones, but not many. And those will then be focused on a new commons facility in the middle between them, where the, where the bridge is now, which is, I started to say, is going to come down. It's already coming down. Uh, has been for a while. But that new commons facility is just exactly that. And it's the opportunity to establish a new fresh image for the, for the facility as well, both for the people that are going to live there, but also for people who pass by. Its impact on the, on the neighborhood will be changed, will be different, just as the school has been. So um, uh, they're not in and of themselves particularly inviting, but by the time we get through with them, they will be, and they'll be a great place to live. Uh, John doesn't like me using the phrase, but making a silk purse out of a sow's ear is really what it's all about. And to think that they, that you almost tore them down is to have run the risk of denying that opportunity. So again, my hat's off to you. Uh, we're privileged to be involved with it. It's a great bunch of people. They're passionate about what they do. And it's fun to work with somebody who's passionate about what they're doing, uh, particularly at my age. Um, the, uh, uh, I think that the, the, the design is, is an important thing. I'd like to point out a couple of things that are important, I think. Number one, the new, the new Commons building, which there was a rendering of somewhere. There it is, right there. Uh, is going to be very open and welcoming. Um, two, the the site will be far will be uh, significantly less impervious material than, than it is now. In other words, it's all building and blacktop. But this project, because of its reduced density in terms of parking requirements, will allow us to make much more green space and much more landscaping, which we can now figure out how to comply with the city's new landscape ordinance while we're at it. But that's a significant change in the character. Forget the buildings being there, but the changes in the site, and they will present a different image. And all part of, I think, a sort of momentum that's occurring in that whole segment of West Oxmoor, all the way from the, the, the street all the way to the top of the hill. And we're privileged to be a part of it. Thank you very much. As I referenced earlier, we, we have two operating partners with us on this project. Um, Karen Musgrove, who, who we've worked with on multiple projects. Um, again, it started out at the Dewberry 1917 clinic that I referenced earlier and certainly continued at the Magic City Acceptance and, and will do so um, with the expansion of the school. Um, one of Karen's deliverables is that she operates uh, a facility known as the Magic City Wellness Center, which uh, for layman's terms is, is a dock in the box um, type deliverable. Um, and so her, her plan for this, and I'll let Karen speak to that, is to bring that concept here to this structure, um, which again, will the mixed use will allow for that but she'll also have a component of that deliverable that will, will speak to the geriatric services that, in our opinion, don't currently exist. Um, and so I'd like Karen to maybe address her functions within the building. Yes, hello again. So my other job is CEO of Birmingham AIDS Outreach, or also BAO. So we have two nonprofits, the school and then BAO. BAO has been in existence from, since 1985. Um, I know some of y'all know BAO. Uh, in 2016, we opened up the Magic City Wellness Center, which basically is just your family medicine providers. Um, and we started off in this really small building, and then we got to expand in 2020 uh, into the Dewberry Building with UAB. So another example of a great partnership. Um, we have two full-time uh, medical MDs. Uh, three nurse practitioners, 
six licensed counselors, and then of course our research team. Um, so our goal is basically to take everything that we've learned at the Wellness Center, which is thriving um, at the Dewberry Building, and move it into this space with a concentration of not only family medicine, but geriatric medicine. So find uh, nurse practitioners who uh, specialize in geriatric medicine, find mental health providers that thrive inside of this space and creative ways to provide services to this particular community. Um, and so the great thing is um, because it's a nonprofit, all the, um, the profit and the income that we make from the services that we provide, we're able to put it back into the nonprofit, which is ultimately the school. So it's just this big circle um, of wonderful ways of how we're supporting each other and supporting uh, the different programs that we're creating. Um, and from, uh, so that's, that's the plan, that's the goal. And so we'll consume um, part of the new space uh, for the, it will not be called the Magic City because we're not in the Magic City. Um, we're in Homewood, so I will think of a clever name for it, but it will be the Wellness Center. So, yeah. Thank Any you. questions? Thank you. All right. Um, Karen's fantastic, and, and our, our relationship has thrived. And, and so one of the things that she certainly has taught me is that it's all about public health. And really, at the, at the core of all of this is kind of this public health um, piece that just keeps recirculating. Um, to that point, as, as I began introducing who we are and what we do on the multifamily world that we've been living in for 20 or so years, um, over the course of, of operating that firm, we've constantly been introduced to moms, dads, uh, aunts, uncles, grandparents, brothers, sisters, whatever the relationship, friend, uh, but, but who ultimately are caregivers for those persons who have been diagnosed with an intellectual and developmental disability. And so it's navigating the housing piece of life with them that um, has been wildly rewarding, but it's also very challenging. Um, and so we were thrilled to have met Beth and her organization, Triumph Services, several years ago now, and we're very pleased to be their landlord at their existing facility in, on Arlington Avenue. And as conversations carried on, it became quickly apparent that the services and the work that Beth's group is doing fit wonderfully um, with this project. And so I'd like Beth to join me at the mic and she can speak to Triumph Services and their plan within the building as well. Beth Zients, Triumph Services. Um, I, I come to y'all tonight both as obviously the leader of Triumph Services. We work with adults in high school age with developmental and intellectual disabilities. Um, we work with a very small subgroup of um, these individuals. We work with a subgroup that um, live independently. Um, for all practical purposes, they're like anyone else. Um, they sometimes need a little help with certain things, so that's where we step in. Um, I also come to you as a parent. I have a 19-year-old that's navigating her way through college as an independent college student. Um, so I come to you as a parent as well as um, a professional. Um, housing is a great need for this community um, for multiple reasons. Number one, a lot of them do need that little bit of extra help, but it's not necessarily the help that you think about. It's not the day-to-day -day living or they would not be living on their own. Um, it's not for medical reasons. We don't oversee medication. We don't do anything medical. So if someone is not independently able to live at home for medical reasons, they would not fit the criteria of um, being a participant of ours and allowing us to serve them. Um, but we help with budgeting. We can help with taking them to the grocery store. A lot of our participants don't drive, so they rely on the bus. Um, the location of this um, proposed facility, this pr proposed apartment complex would be fantastic because it's got, it would have a great bus stop, um, which I think was part of the um, plan was to have a, a very nice bus stop with covered um, place for them to be out of the rain and all of that. Um, but it would also allow us to serve a larger amount of people in the Birmingham area as well as statewide. Um, I could see if a, I could see an apartment complex like this and where there's services that we can help 
where people would, would be more willing to move to the Birmingham, the greater Birmingham area. Um, the options now are basically twofold. It's a traditional apartment, which they do well in, but there's a loneliness factor to that. Um, when you talk about the neurodiverse community, um, you know, there's some comfort knowing that they're in, a, in an area where they can have people that are like them and that they can relate to. Um, there's also the availability of services in this city. Um, we would love to serve more and more people in this city, but quite frankly, when I have someone working eight hours a day and they're going from Trustville to spend an hour with one participant to Mountain Brook, then over to Hoover, I mean, we're able to serve three or four people a day. So obviously the expense for those services are pretty great because of the time it takes from my staff. So I think to be able to have more individuals that would be able to live independently in an apartment by themselves, but the families have the peace of mind to know that if they wanted to choose to have services, that we could provide services um, more frequently and obviously at a more cost effective um, way because we would be going to one location. Um, there are also other service providers in the city. Um, you know, obviously if they had personal services from somewhere else, they could be served there too. I mean, it's, you know, it's just an apartment complex where it would happen to house um, a lot of participants that we could help. Um, we also see a great advantage to the over 55 population. I really don't like to think of that as aging because I'm right there. <laughs> So it's kind of hard for me to say that 55 is aging, but um, it's a great population mix because um, there's just a lot of similarities. You know, they all kind of need an extra hand from time to time. Um, but again, this is not like um, an assisted living facility. We do have participants that move to assisted living facilities. Those are the ones that would have medical issues where they really need that assistance or um, you know, significant mobility issues or safety issues. The population, um, again, that we serve that would live in these apartments would be the same people that could live next door to you. Um, it just would be in an environment where there would be a lot of, of help and services for them. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Go ahead, Randall. Right. Um, thank you guys for um, listening to the presentation. So. Uh, I got involved about three or four weeks ago uh, just to kind of walk through some of the, the legal issues associated, you know, as uh, Council President Wyatt uh, mentioned, you know, that we're not seeking restrictions as part of the ordinance, um, but we are working, you know, within the constraints of law to kind of develop an operational plan uh, for, this, uh, for this proposed facility. Uh, as, uh, as John mentioned, you know, the heart of this is the Magic City Acceptance Academy. And so what we've tried to do with some language that we proffered uh, to the city attorney was to make sure that that was front and center in terms of any consideration of this request. But at the end of the day, the, the key here is this is, they are separate properties, but all of this is in conjunction with expanding and facilitating the Magic City Acceptance Academy. Um, you know, you heard from two of the, the nonprofit service providers uh, for this uh, that kind of explains why it's a mixed-use project. That's why the MXD uh, zoning designation we think is appropriate uh, because of the way the buildings are. We're dealing with existing buildings. We're fitting in the space. Um, and so the plan is, you know, as, as has been articulated to you guys, to have a, 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 a holistic campus with green space, with the dock in the box, et cetera, that serves the school, but, but also has uses adjacent there too that serve the school as well, right? So, so that's the holistic thing that we've been trying to do. Um, obviously, there might be questions, and so we brought the full team uh, in case there are questions. Um, and obviously, as you can tell uh, from uh, the presentation, we're very passionate about this. This has been something that obviously there's a financial return, hopefully, but really, this is, uh, this is really just a labor of love to kind of do the right thing. So happy to answer any questions, um, and we're available. Thank you. Let me do this. Is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? Come on up. <laughs> you, you do. You do. You, you, you get <laughs> So 
know, yeah, it's supposed to be romance. <laughs> it's, you just it's figure it's like Madonna, right? <laughs> that's it's what just you're looking <laughs> for. JJ, that's your job. <laughs> But yes, as I said last time, the need is so great, I can't believe it. You know, and as I was sitting there, <clears throat> I started thinking about the participants that I, or the people that I've been my best friends for 45 years that have moved to Homewood because they had a place to go. And one of them is right across the street from the park, the Kyles. You know, they've been neighbors of mine my entire life. And Janie now lives on the park. An attorney, Jim, who you know, he has a house in Homewood that he has bought. He was in Mount Brook because and it's the floors where he says I can have Merrill and his friends on one floor and maybe a sitter or somebody on the other floor. And so you're watching people move here to be closer to their children, but their children are getting older also housing for the mentally challenged population has been the hardest answer whenever a person asks anything to me. They don't care about the doc, well they care, I mean don't quote that, don't take that minute down. They care about that part of stuff, but they really want to know what's going to happen now that my people, their children live forever. You know, is it where you have your brother-in-law live with you 25, 30 years? He didn't get in the body contact, did he? <laughs> Mike, how long did, how long did John Garrett sleep with you? <laughs> See? And he could be right down the street. Also, I have just this great idea just now. Do you know what this would do for economic development? Because none of them drive, so they all have to shop in Homewood. <laughs> Brilliant! Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Kirk. All right. Anybody else? Not that I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, and I'll just say this, it, it, and Mr. Miner can correct me if I'm wrong. The, again, there are no restrictions on the residential component. What we're talking about here is that there are services that are adjacent to the residential component. And so when everyone's talking about residences, they're talking about people who would want to live near those uh, services. Um, rather than, but, but anybody can live there. That's correct. Okay. All right. All right, uh, any other questions or comments from Mr. Alamon? Yeah, I just want to um, echo Councillor Andrews' comments about the fact that these buildings were basically abandoned. I, I work across the street every day, and so I take a couple drives up there and just been really impressed and amazed by the vitality that the school has already brought and the opportunity to complement what's already been established there to further develop these, these buildings and provide needed services and provide opportunities um, for housing I think that these are these are these are good things for our community I think it's great for West Homewood and um, I thank you for your efforts all right anybody else uh, yeah Same. I wanted to bring up a point that um, was brought up at the Planning Commission and um, and we also discussed um, offline with Beth um, and my sons also use the services at vocational rehab services which is right up the hill so that is also um, a facility that they would be using um, this population would be using this right up the hill so again as John pointed out you're really creating sort of this ecosystem and and they can uh, you know transport themselves to this place easily right. from where they're from this location right. and a lot of our referrals come from ADRS we help employ which again to Trisha's point, we would we always employ our participants close to where they live. So now there will be a larger pool of individuals that will be employed in the Homewood area because that's where we would place these individuals in employment. Okay, Mr. Wolverton. Yes, I just had a quick question about um, accessibility in in the units themselves. Um, so, and maybe I missed it, but are any of them going to be physically handicap accessible. I know kind of geared towards um, some uh, an aging population was mentioned originally, but I, I guess I didn't hear a breakdown, but also to tie in vo voc rehabs up the hill, but also children's rehab service that does a lot of work with people with wheelchairs and, you know, alternative mobility. So just kind of uh, that, as that population ages, they tend to go more into voc rehab, but still have some of those impairments. Again, I know there's been an emphasis on people with intellectual um, disabilities, but there's also 
a different population that I think sometimes has difficulty finding accessible housing too. So uh, handicap accessibility is, is physical handicap accessibility is, is law. Is, so the, the, the project has to provide facilities in accordance with, with the law. And, uh, and the feds will come get you. If you <laughs> serious stuff. But beyond that, uh, I think we've had discussions uh, with John. There's a, there's a new concept. It's not that new, but it's been around. It's called universal design. And, and it's really about um, uh, a whole range of, of issues that in many cases are small details um, that make it easier for a broader cross-section of people to live there or a broader cross-section longer to live there. And so I think it's, it's uh, uh, there are a number of those things which we've talked about which we will incorporate into the project, which will, and some of them you'd never notice unless you were, unless you had a particular uh, issue, physical issue that, um, uh, that this responded to. But I think um, uh, the, the, the idea is that the project will be, uh, will have a number of those characteristics of universal design which will broaden its capacity to accommodate um, people with lots of different kinds of physical disabilities, not just the neurological. Right. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's right. Nothing is ever specialized. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Mr. Kendrick, if you give us a first reading. Yes, there's an ordinance to regulate and to amend the zoning ordinance and the zoning map of the city of Homewood, whereas the Planning Commission has favorably recommended that the property described herein be rezoned from its current zoning classification C-5 General Business District to the MXD Mixed Use District Zoning District, whereas the council has determined to set a public hearing on October 9, 2023. Now, therefore, be ordained by the city council as follows, that the property described herein with the address 55 and 65 Bagby Drive with a legal description attached as Exhibit A be in the same as hereby <clears throat> rezoned from its current zoning classification C5 to MXD pursuant to the development plan attached to Exhibit B. Section 2, that from and after the enactment of this ordinance by the City Council, the restrictions applicable to the MXD zoning district, this ordinance, the final development plan attached to Exhibit B and the proffer made by the applicant that the permitted uses of the property shall be limited to facilitate an expansion of the adjacent Matic City Acceptance Academy through rehabilitation of two existing vacant office buildings to contain residential apartments as well as office space for various mental health and life services organizations shall control the uses made of and permitted on the property described in section one. Section two, that six o'clock on October 19th, excuse me, October 9th is the time and place for the public hearing. Section four, that the city clerk has given notice as required by law for this public hearing. Section five, any part of provision of the ordinance is declared to be unconstitutional are invalid by a court of competent jurisdiction. All other parts, provisions, or section of the ordinance not thereby affected shall remain in full force and effect. Section six, the ordinance shall become effective immediately upon its adoption by the city council, approval by the mayor and otherwise becoming law. All right, thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Uh, with that, I would entertain a motion and a second for unanimous consent. Second. Motion by Mr. Alamon, second by Ms. Andrus, and a roll call vote, please, Mr. Seacrest. Yes, sir. Councilor Blomey. Yes, sir. Here. Uh, yes. Alamon? Yes. Wilberton? Yes. Sims? Yes. Jones? Yes. Now? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Hart? Yes. President Wise? Yes. So that is 10 to 0. Uh, and now I'd entertain a motion and a second for approval. But right before I do that, I just wanted to thank you all for uh, the proffer. Um, I appreciate appreciate working with uh, everybody on that. Um, so I'd entertain a motion and a second for approval. So moved. Second. Second. All right, motion by Ms. Andrus, second by Ms. Nelms, and another roll call vote, please. Mr. Seacrest. Sir. Councilor Walton. Yes, sir. Gear. Yes. Alamo. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Sims. Yes. Jones. Yes. Nelms. Yes. Andrus. Yes. Harden. Abstain. President Wise. Yes, so that is nine to zero to one and is approved and will be ordinance 2879, which brings us to the end of our old business agenda and yeah go ahead you're fine <laughs> i didn't want it to be in
incomplete. No, no, no. <laughs> they, we, I, no, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Um, and brings us to our committee referral agenda. I would entertain a motion and second for approval of that agenda. So, so moved. Second. All right. We have a motion from Mr. Alamon, second from Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is approved 10 to 0, which brings us to other new business. First item 081023, request to set a public hearing for consideration to rezone 1906 Courtney Drive from C1 to C2. Uh, the applicant is McConnell White and Terry Realty, an insurance company, to facilitate the proposed redevelopment of the Homewood Piggly Wiggly Grocery Store. This comes to us uh, from the Planning Commission. Ms. Andrus, mm -hmm. that vote on the rezone was eight, was it seven to two? On the rezone, it was eight to one. Eight to one. On the Excuse development me. plan, it was seven to two. Got it. All right, so that is, was eight to one favorable recommendation. We are going to set that public hearing for November 6th at 6 p.m. All right, next item, 091023, request to set a public hearing for consideration to approve a final development plan for 3030 Independence Drive, 3008 Drake Street, 1909 Oxmoor Road, and 1906 Courtney Drive from uh, which is, the zoning is C1 and C2, uh, and the applicant is McConnell White and Terry Realty, an insurance company for the proposed redevelopment of a 3.21 acre site centered around the planned construction of a new 27,650 foot square foot Piggly Wiggly grocery store to a new 6,000 square foot retail building as well as associated parking, landscaping, and other site improvements. This comes to us from the Planning Commission with a vote of 7 to 2, favorable recommendation. We will also set that public hearing for November 6th at 6 p.m. Next item, 10 10 23, request to set a public hearing for consideration to rezone 1300 Columbiana Road from I-2 to C-1. The applicant is Eric Rogers, uh, Progressive Properties, um, and the owner is Second Presbyterian Church to permit construction of a 20,000 125 square foot single story medical office building. This comes to us with the Planning Commission vote of four to five unfavorable recommendation. We will set that one also for November 6th at 6 p.m. So get ready for a long night mm -hmm. on the 6th. Uh, next item, 11 10 23, request to set a public hearing for consideration to approve an amended development plan at 202 State Farm Parkway. Uh, the applicant is the Homewood Property Outparcel Owner LLC to permit the proposed construction of a new 3,726 square foot single story urgent care medical center, uh, as well as associated parking, landscaping, and other site improvements. This comes to us from the Planning Commission with a vote of 9 to 0 favorable recommendation. We will also set that one for the 6th at 6 p.m. Next item, 121023, request to set a public hearing for consideration to approve the final development plan at 501 Scott Street. Uh, the applicant is Eric, Hudson, Eric Hinden and Hinden uh, Huckstein Architects, PC, and the owner is Dr. Michael Kilgore, uh, DMV, DVM, excuse me, uh, centered around the interior and exterior renovations of an existing Homewood Animal Hospital that would be expanded in size to 3,511 square feet to accommodate a combination of office examination and treatment services, as well as expanded parking, landscaping, and other site improvements. That one we're going to hold off and set that one for uh, November 27th at 6 p.m. Yeah, well, I, truthfully, I tried to do, do better than that, but I couldn't, so, <laughs> so I, I did what I could. Um, all right, so that gets us to our last item, 131023, request for consideration of approval of vouchers for the period of September 26, 2023 through October 9, 2023. Uh, Mr. Jones, does this yield Mr. to Mr. Harden? Yes, um, I did have a chance to go through the vouchers. Um, it's a little scary that uh, our city clerk and finance chief work on Sundays, but apparently they do. And so I got all the answers to all my questions. So I make a motion to approve. All right. So we have a motion from Mr. Harden, second from Mr. Jones. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is approved 10 to 0 and will be resolution 23149. All right, and that brings us to the end of the agenda tonight. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Nothing tonight. All right.
just so everyone uh, remembers, not that it's going to affect us next week, but just as we look towards the rest of the month, remember that even though we have a fifth Monday this month, that we will meet for committees on the 30th, um, and then uh, we will have a council meeting on November 6th, committees on the 13th, we'll take off Thanksgiving week, and then have our second council meeting of November on the 27th. Also, just heads up for December, um, uh, we will have committees on the 4th, council on the 11th, and committees and council on the 18th. Uh, and then we will obviously take off the week of Christmas and actually the day of Christmas, which is on a Monday this year. So uh, just be prepared. Obviously, that doesn't affect us for this week. Um, we'll still meet as normal next Monday night. But with that, uh, Mr. Gwaltney. Thank you, Mr. President. I will set public safety immediately following finance at 5 p.m. Uh, besides that, I have no comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. Gear. A quick update from the Arts Council. They wanted me to let everybody know that they have two new events uh, planned for uh, early next year. One is they're coordinating with uh, Homewood High School Band to help plan and fund a fundraising event for their trip to Ireland. They're going to be featuring Shaun of the South and Two on a String uh, for a fundraiser at the high school uh, February 4th. And then they've been working with the Senior Center in West Homewood uh, to plan some uh, lunch lunchtime performances with Dolores Hydock. Um, I think that'll also start early spring or late winter. And then they also have uh, the drum circle in Spring Park was a big hit last year, so they, they intend to uh, have their second annual drum circle in the spring. And that's it. All right, thank you. Mr. Alamont. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Homewood Middle School. They celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month this uh, past week, and it was nice all the kids got to come out and see each other, and my daughter loved being able to celebrate her culture, so thank you, Homewood Middle. Thank you. All right, Mr. Wolf. Honestly, I don't, <clears throat> I don't really have anything special tonight um, other than to give uh, Amelia a shout out for her first soccer goal uh, last week. And, uh, our girls have been playing soccer for several years together, but she usually plays defense and got to get in there on offense and score. So it was All great. Right. Thank you. Mr. Sam. Yes, uh, the beautification no, no board. PND, or, uh, no, yeah, no public work, sorry. Okay. The beautification board met today um, and just want to update the council on a couple of things from that meeting. One is uh, glad to see that the Edgewood historical marker is back at Broadway and Oxmoor. That was kind of a collaborative effort of the environmental, I'm sorry, the Historic Preservation Commission and the beautification board to get that back. So it's good to see it um, there again. Also, the beautification uh, award for the next quarter is going to be presented to the Homewood Police Department. So the board voted on that. So that will be um, information forthcoming about the placement of that marker. So I invite you all to attend if it, if it works with your schedule. Um, also the decorative street sign project, which is the, um, it, not the green signs, but the more decorative black signs that identify um, the streets throughout the city of Homewood. That is underway. There's a number up now um, throughout the city. And that was kind of um, discussed today at the meeting. And that was a project that a number of board members, including Chris Smith, worked on. So it's awesome to see that um, implementation occurring. I saw where Councilor Smith um, had posted yesterday or the other day about, about it in honor of Chris. And um, so definitely wanted to reference that uh, as it's great to see that happening. Um, and then finally, we were looking ahead um, to December as far as council dates. There's a number of dates related to the holidays coming up, and I just want to share. One is the Chamber Open Houses on November 2nd. The Christmas Parade is on December 5th, from my understanding. And the menorah lighting will be on December 11th, immediately prior to council, um, from that 5 to 6 time frame. So hopefully um, you all can all attend if your schedules permit. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll echo also Chris Smith. He was an assistant scoutmaster where I uh, serve in Troop 79, and he did a, such a good job and ran the tree lot sales for the Mountain Scouts. So that, that was a big job, and we're still trying to find someone to, <laughs> to fill his shoes. 
if you want to volunteer, let me know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, what a, what a great guy. And that was really his vision. And he called me multiple times about the signs. And so we finally got that moving. Um, and so I'm happy about that. Um, uh, finance will be at five. And uh, one comment I was just going to make, if you were wondering how we got the exceptional foundation here, uh, she was here as an example. Uh, it, when she brought that idea to Homewood uh, many, many years ago, uh, she had that same fire and determination mm -hmm. and excitement, and uh, and it, it was it was not an overwhelming vote at the time, but uh, I was so happy that that started uh, many, many years ago. So I'm happy about that, and then uh, I'll just say Happy Columbus Day. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. I'm just wondering if anyone has ever seen Trisha without that. Probably not. <laughs> no, probably not. I haven't. <laughs> no. All right, Ms. Nelms. I don't have anything tonight. No. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Andrews. Um, so Barry offered, I'm going to set special issues for Barry, and she offered to go after P&D, but looking at my referral agenda, I don't think that makes sense. She's got a very small item that's actually my item on her agenda, so I'm going to go ahead and set well, special issues. Do you have issues. a lot on yours? I do have a lot on mine. I'm trying to figure out how to manage that. I'll have to put that together tomorrow. But um, so I'm going to go ahead and set special issues to follow public safety, and then I'm going to go ahead and set P and D to follow special issues. So we'll go ahead and give her that spot right after public safety. And I, speaking of um, the exceptional foundation, uh, went with the, the mayor and um, President Wyatt and Councillor Smith to um, and spouses to uh, dinner entertainment this year, and it was. I mean, it's great every year, but I don't know. It was a 10-year anniversary, and it was, like, the best of the last 10 years. It was unreal. I mean, it was so great. And the artwork was fabulous. Um, I got two pieces that are hanging in my office right now, but the the special, uh, the fun of the night was watching the money go up on the Golden Retriever painting, and it made it up to $675. And <laughs> we just sat there and just we kept... You know, you could just do the uh, QR code at your table, and we just watched it go up and up and up. We were, we, we Keith and I were out after 200. <laughs> it kept going up. So, uh, but I did get two fabulous pieces. And uh, the great thing about that app is, if you go into the app, you can see who painted it, and so you see a picture of the artist with their painting. It's amazing. And um, so, it just was a fantastic night as usual. But this this particular night was really wonderful. So. As long as the Backstreet Boys show up. Oh, show up. and Prince. And Prince is good too, but the Backstreet Boys might be good. All right, Mr. Harden. Um, the only thing I have other than I have to go to my daughter, I, don't, I get to go to my daughter's birthday party in Sylacauga tomorrow. It's halfway Same. between oh, Auburn and sweet. here. Um, she's turning 19, I think. Um, moms know these things, dads don't. But I also always want to thank my co-counselor, she makes my life easy because she does all the heavy lifting. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I don't have anything tonight other than to thank you all, everyone, for their work. Uh, and we will see everyone in a couple of weeks.